Half a day students, I am Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. You all have been through a year of big changes. We've had to adapt and make big changes to keep our families and our island safe. But with change comes opportunity and a chance to try new things like PBS University. While Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenori and I will continue to do our part to keep our island safe, you students have a part to play as well. Your part is to keep learning and to keep up with your lessons. That's why I am happy to see you here ready to learn with PBS University. PBS University is a way to bring a continuous educational curriculum to you while you stay safe at home during this time. To help you keep up with your studies, we asked our friends at PBS Guam and the Guam Department of Education to put together this episode. Thank you for doing your part and have a great lesson. PBS University is a program by PBS Guam and the Guam Department of Education in conjunction with public school teachers. These lessons are created to provide both parents and students with a unique educational experience while helping students to continue learning at home. PBS University, next on PBS Guam. One, two, three, four. Come along, let's hear a song. We'll have a great adventure. We'll have a great adventure. Numbers, letters, science things, all that we can do. Help you deal with how you feel. Share with us too. It's super cool and just like school. Our awesome learning adventures. So grab a friend, the fun will end. Our awesome learning adventures. Awesome learning adventures. Hey boys and girls, so good to see you again. Yakwe, that's how you say hello in Marshallese. My name is Mrs. Martin and I will be your first and second grade teacher for Literacy. Today, we'll be learning something new. Let's learn how to find the main idea in a text. Here is your learning target. I can identify the main idea in a text with several paragraphs or with a single paragraph. Can you read that out loud, boys and girls? I can identify the main idea in a text with, with several paragraphs or with a single paragraph. I especially like how you used expression to read that learning target. I have a few vocabulary words that are kind of important for us today. Here are three vocabulary words that we need to understand. The first one is paragraph. A paragraph is a piece of writing with a few sentences that talks about one subject or main idea. But what is a main idea? Well, the main idea is what the story is mostly about. And finally, details. Details are small pieces of information that will help us figure out what the main idea might be. Take a look at the image of the flower here. The center of the flower will be the main idea and the little petals around the flower are going to be all the details we can find. And that can help us discover what the main idea is all about. The little details that we can find in a story could be who the characters are, what the biggest problem is, where they were, when did this happen, and why it happened, or how did they solve that problem. So let's practice with a story called My Lost Cat Sam. After we listen to this story, Together, we will try to find out all the main ideas by recalling or remembering all the little details in the story. 
Don't worry, boys and girls. Today's episode, we will be working on this together. Okay, we are ready for our special guest who will narrate our story for us. My lost cat, Sam. Ava, Ellie, and Emma took their cat, Sam, to the pond today. Sam loves to watch the ducks by the pond. The girls saw an ice cream truck drive by, and when they looked back where Sam was, he was gone. They searched everywhere for him. Together, Ava, Ellie, and Emma were determined to find Sam. They looked behind the bush. He wasn't there. They looked by the other side of the pond. He was nowhere to be found. They looked inside the Triceratops' mouth. He wasn't there either. The girls stopped to ask two ducks if they've seen a gray cat, and they pointed back where Glass saw him. Ava, Ellie, and Emma found Sam on top of a sign. The girls were so happy. They celebrated by playing at Sam's favorite place, the seesaw. The end. Let's recall some details in this story so that we can figure out what the main idea might be. Who were the characters? Ava, Ellie, Ellie Emma, Sam, and the two ducks. That's right. What was going on? Their, Their cat, cat was lost. Good one. And where were they at? At the pond. When were they there? Was it during the daytime or nighttime? Daytime. That was easy. Why did they like going to the pond? Sam loves watching the ducks. Perfect answer. Your turn. Let's read a passage and find some details to figure out what the main idea is. I went on a hike with my mom one morning to Tarzan's Falls. It was hard because it was my first hike. I almost wanted to give up. It took us 45 minutes to hike there. I didn't give up though. I was proud of myself for finishing. Tarzan Falls is beautiful. Okay, boys and girls, let's find some details. Who is this story about? A girl and her mom. Good answer. And what was going on? They went on a hike and the girl wanted to give up. Good answer, boys and girls. And where did this passage take place? At Tarzan Falls. When did they go there? In the morning. That's right. And finally, why, or rather, how did this story end? The girl finished the hike and was proud. You did so well, boys and girls. Great work. So if we put this together, we can find the main idea. And that is that a girl and her mom went on a hike. The girl wanted to give up. They went on a hike to Tarzan Falls in the morning. In the end, the girl finished the hike and was proud. That's all I have for you today. Ekwe, that means goodbye and Marshallese. Thank you for joining me today. Take care and be kind. Ali, friends! Ali is how we say hello in Palawan. I'm Mrs. Pegarito, your first and second grade math teacher. Guess what? I'm going on a very cool trip today. You know where I'm going? Well, I'll give you some hints. Clue number one, I'll be taking with me a flashlight. <laughs> Clue two, I'll also be taking a net. Maybe I'll catch some fish or maybe some butterflies. <laughs> Do you know where I'm going yet? All right, last clue. I'll also be bringing marshmallows, chocolate, and graham crackers. <laughs> All right, where's Mrs. Pegarito going? Did you say camping? That's right, I'm going camping. I can't wait. Hmm, 
I wonder if I can take all my favorite things with me. What should I bring it in? Hmm. A bag? Yeah, I can bring it in a bag. Oh, look at this. I found a bin. I can pack all my favorite things in this bin. For everything to fit in this bin, I'm going to have to measure them. What can I use to measure my things? There are so many tools we can use to measure. We can use a ruler. We can also use a tape measure. <laughs> wow! I have an idea. Let's measure all my favorite things with marshmallows. <laughs> Come on, friends. Would you like to help me measure? Great. Let's get going. Rulers and measuring tapes are examples of standard length measuring units. But we can use non-standard units to measure. That means that the measurement might be different between people. Here, we're going to use marshmallows to measure. When we're using non-standard units, we have to make sure that each of these units are the same size and length. When we measure using the marshmallows, each marshmallow will be one unit. So two marshmallows measure two units. When we measure something, we need to make sure that we line them up straight and that there are no gaps or spaces between our marshmallows. All the things I bring have to fit in my bin. That means they have to measure at least seven units or less. All right, let's get started. Let's measure this chocolate bar. One, two, three, four, five, six. This chocolate bar is six units long. How about this pack of graham crackers? One, two, three, four. Four units. I want to make sure I bring my water flask. How long is my water flask? Let's measure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. marshmallow units. Okay, try this one on your own. How long is my flashlight? Right, seven units. this magnifying glass. I want to take this camping. It'll help me explore the really small things. Let's measure. How many units? Five! Awesome! I get to bring my magnifying glass. Can I bring my favorite hat? No. It's eight units long. It will not fit in my bin. Can I bring Baby Shark? <laughs> Let's measure. Four units, all right, I can bring Baby Shark. 
Nom 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 nom. Baby shark's hungry. Can I bring my toy bus? Yes! It's four units long. <laughs> oh, I want to bring my other favorite toy, my poppets. Let's see if I can bring these poppets. How many units does it measure? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yay! I can bring my poppets. Can I bring my unicorn? Yes, I can. It's one unit long. Boing! What about my favorite painting? Let's measure. How many units? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Oh no, I can't bring my painting. Okay, I've had enough measuring for today. Let's learn how to make s'mores. Yes, s'mores. <laughs> Here we go. You will need a candle, chocolate, graham crackers, and marshmallows. Remember kids, let an adult light the candle for you. Make sure you have an adult supervisor around when you're making s'mores. Let's get it all toasted so that it's nice and gooey. Then we lay it on a graham cracker, add the chocolate, and sandwich it in with another graham cracker. And there you have it! S'mores! Mmm! Delicious! All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for helping measure all my favorite things. Now I'm all packed to go, they all fit inside my bin, and I'm ready to go camping. <laughs> I'll see you next time on PBS University. Goodbye! Li he is how you say hi in Taiwan. Li he, girls and boys. I'm Mrs. Guerrero, and I'm here to teach science for first and second grade. Oh, shh. Do you hear that? What sound is that? Yes, it's chickens. Oh, I hear something else. Oh, it's a bell coming from that church and birds in those trees. Ooh, now what's that sound? It's the sound of the beach, my favorite place to be. Sounds are all around us. And today we're gonna learn all about sounds and vibrations. Sounds are found everywhere we go. There are pleasant sounds, like birds singing, or even music coming from an instrument. There are also noisy sounds, like cars honking, or your alarm clock going off. All sounds are made by the same thing, vibrations. How does a sound begin? All sounds start with a movement, like using a stick to hit something, or blowing air through an object. These movements cause the objects to vibrate. When something vibrates, it shakes back and forth quickly. Sometimes it's hard to see it with our eyes. Instead, we hear these vibrations with our ears. How do we hear sounds? Vibrations travel through sound waves. Sound waves move through air, water, and solid objects, then to our ears. They travel inside and reach a part called the eardrum. 
These waves cause our eardrums to vibrate. Then it sends a message to our brain that tells us that we're hearing a sound. Let's see some sounds and vibrations in action. I have this box here full of things that can help us see and feel vibrations and sounds. Would you like to see what's inside? Here's what's in the box. A can, rubber bands, a comb, pieces of wax paper, a wine glass, and some water. You probably have most of these things around your house. Let's see what will happen if we put this can and these rubber bands together. So you take your rubber band like this and put it around the can like this. Be careful not to snap your fingers. What kind of instrument do you think it's gonna sound like if I pluck the rubber band like this? Hmm. Maybe, let's find out. Do you hear it? It sounds like a guitar. The sound is made when the rubber band hits the can like this. It vibrates on the sides of the can. Do you see it? I wonder what this other rubber band will sound like if I put it on there. Do you think it'll sound different or the same? Maybe, let's find out. It sounds different, like a guitar. Ooh. What do you think will happen if you put this comb and this wax paper together. Let's see. First you fold your wax paper like this in half. And then you put your comb inside. Make sure that the teeth are touching the crease of the wax paper like this. See? And then you hold the sides like this and put it up to your lips really close like this. And make a sound like this. Do, do, do. But make sure it's close to the wax paper. Do. <laughs> it makes a funny sound. This is a comb kazoo. Do, 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 do. Your voice makes the wax paper vibrate really quickly against the teeth of the comb, making the sound. Do. This last one is my favorite. You're going to need a wine glass and some water. First, we're going to pour water into the wine glass. Then, we're going to wet our finger and then run it around the rim of the glass. Also, you're gonna have to hold the bottom of the glass very carefully so that it doesn't move. Okay, wet my finger like this. It's singing! When my finger goes around the glass, it causes something called friction. And that's what makes the glass vibrate and make the sound. What do you think will happen if I pour more water inside? Let's try it. Are you ready? Okay, dip my finger. It sounds different. And you can even see the water vibrating. Did you see it? So cool! 
I hope you can try some of these little sound experiments at home too. But always remember, ask your parents permission first, and then have them try it with you. Well, that's all the time I have left today. I hope you had fun learning all about sounds and vibrations with me. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, always remember, work hard and be kind. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> Half a day students, welcome to PBS University. My name is John Fernandez, and I'm the superintendent of the Guam Department of Education. These PBS University lessons are made to help you to continue learning. The teachers here prepared fun lessons on science, character education, math, English, and more. And they made it for you, the students of Guam. We're very grateful to them for their instruction. We're also thankful for you students, parents, and guardians who are watching. Remember, stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you soon in the next school year. Thank you. Ni hao, boys and girls. Ni hao is how you say hello in Chinese. Can you say that with me? Ni hao. And welcome back to PBS University, where we learn so much about so many things. We learn about science, we learn about math, we learn things in language arts, and even in social studies. Speaking of social studies, do you remember who I am? That's right. I'm Miss Valencia, your first and second grade social studies teacher. Okay, quick question. When you look out your window or when you go outside and ride your bike, what are some of the things that you see outside? Cats? Okay, dogs? A few cars passing by? Hmm, those are all really good observations, but how many of you see things like mountains or even hills, maybe even the ocean? Because I know I do. Sometimes when I look out my bedroom window, I see a giant mountain or when I'm driving along the road and I look and I look, I see the ocean. These are examples of landforms. Okay landforms. This is what we are going to learn about. Are you ready? Okay, but let's first go over what about landforms we are going to learn. First, we will learn what a landform is. Second, we will learn about different types of landforms. And then to tie it all together, we are going to play a little game. Are you ready? Let's get started. Landforms are natural formations that can be found all across our planet. Some examples of landforms are... I mentioned it earlier. Were you listening? Let me hear it. That's right. Mountains, oceans, lakes, rivers, valleys. The list can go on and on and on. But for today, we will only focus on a few to help us visualize these landforms, I'm going to share some pictures and some videos of certain types of landforms from around the world. Are you ready? You sure sound like you're ready. Let's get to it. The first type of landform that we will talk about rise all the way above, high above its surrounding areas. And that's known as a Mountain, yes, a mountain. Can you guys make a mountain with your hands with me? Yes, high above. Okay, so mountains rise all the way up above its surrounding areas. So if you were to have a bunch of mountains connected to each other, then you would form a mountain range. Look at this cool video I found of the Rocky Mountains. Ooh, so Cool. Moving along to landform number two. 
look at this video. Hmm. Now that's a lot of sand. But that's not the beach. Any guesses as to what this might be? Okay, okay, I'll give you another hint. What kind of animal is this? Yep, it's a camel. So, what landform has a lot of sand? And you can find some camels there. Yes, it's the desert. And it sure is hot there. Whew. This is another type of landform. The water looks like it's falling. So, <laughs> what kind of landform do you think this is? That's right, a waterfall. Can you do that with me? Waterfall. <sighs> Last example of a landform, and then I promise we'll get to our game. Take a look at this video. Hmm. What's that stuff that's flowing? It for sure does not look like a river and for sure does not look like a waterfall. In fact, it looks really hot, but that's definitely not a desert. Any guesses as to what that landform is? Did someone say a volcano? Okay. What is a volcano, you may ask? Well, a volcano is kind of like a mountain. But at the top, there is an opening. And when it gets really hot, something comes out of it and makes a push explosion. And that stuff that comes out and flows all over the earth, you know, like that red stuff that you saw in that video, that's known as lava. I think it's about time we can play a game. All you have to do is identify which image is an image of a landform. Okay, first one. Which one is the landform? Image A or image B? Did you say image A? Great job! What kind of landform is that? Yup, it's a mountain. Moving along. Which one is the landform? Image A or image B? Yes, definitely image B is the landform. Next one, which one is the landform? Image A or image B? Yep, image A is the landform. Fantastic job, boys and girls. You were able to identify the landform. Yes. Okay, I promise I'll stop dancing. Okay, I'm sorry. So we learned the definition of a landform. We were able to see different types of landforms that you can find all around Earth. And then we played a game which you guys did really, really great at. So the next thing I want you to try to do is go outside and try to see what types of landforms are around you. Are there any mountains? Are there any rivers? Oh, not rivers, that's, that's a waterfall. Are there any waterfalls, rivers? I don't know. Write it down and let me know the next time we see each other here at PBS University. Bye, boys and girls. Take care. Buenas and hoffa day, friends. My name is Miss Blankaflor, and I'll be your character education teacher for first and second grade. Can you guess what topic we are going to talk about today? Good guess. Today, we are going to talk about what to do when dealing with big feelings or big emotions. Many of us have really big hearts. We feel a lot of things. Sometimes we feel happy. Sometimes we feel sad. Sometimes we feel mad. And sometimes we feel sleepy. 
Some of these emotions can happen really strongly. Sometimes I don't know what to do when I'm upset, sad, or angry. So here are some things that we can do while we feel these big emotions. Sometimes we don't know what to do. So I'm going to share with you three things that you can do when you feel these big emotions. They can help you keep your mind off of those feelings and also help you stay focused. The first thing that you can try is coloring. How many of you like to color? Me too, I like to color. So grab yourself your nearest coloring book, some crayons, markers, colored pencils, or whatever you like to color with, and let's go. This is the coloring book that I have to share with you today. It's called Explore, Learn, and Color Guam. It's full of beautiful drawings of historical sites and popular spots here on our beautiful island. See this page in the front? This is the one that we're going to color today. First, you need to find a flat surface so you can put your coloring book or coloring sheet down. Then, you'll need to find some coloring utensils. I have colored pencils. Now, when you're coloring, you want to take your time. You want to breathe and focus on what colors you want to use. What color am I using for the Laddie Stone? Gray! That's right! See how focused Miss Blancaflor is in trying to fill in her Laddie Stone? Not too much pressure on the pencil, but not too light either. I'm also trying to stay inside the lines. I think I'm done with the Laddie Stones for now. Next, I'm gonna paint the sky. What color is this that I'm choosing to paint the sky with? Blue, that's right. So let's shift our drawing a little bit so we can start to color in the sky. There's no particular order that you need to follow when you are coloring. You pick what you wanna do. It's totally up to you. So here you can see, now I'm doing the sky, even though I haven't done some other Laddie Stones. I'm just taking my time here. Okay, you get the picture. Let me go ahead and show it to you when it's all done. All done. Another thing you can do is play with the poppet. Here I am popping and counting my whale poppet. Okay, so now you can count with me. We'll be at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, can't forget the tail, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Whew, that's a lot. I feel so much better. Another cool thing about these poppets is that you can flip them right over and do the exact same thing on the other side. So fun! So here, you don't have to go in any order. I'm just popping randomly, slow and fast. It's totally up to you. All the way until they're all popped. The last thing that I do when I feel these big emotions is I remember to breathe. So breathe with me. We're going to breathe in through our nose and breathe out through our mouth. We're going to count two, three, ready? Breathe in with me for one, two, three. Breathe out from your mouth with one, two, three. Good job. 
Sometimes we need to do that more than one time. I make it a rule to try to practice that at least five times. So try it with me, okay? I'll count for you and you breathe. If it helps, you can close your eyes. So let's try. Ready? Breathe in through your nose. One, two, three. Hold it deep and let it out. One, two, three. Wonderful. Let's try one more time. Breathe in through your nose. One, two, three, four. Oh, that was a big breath. Let it out. One, two, three, and four. Great job, everyone. I hope that practicing some of these activities help you go from this to this. All right. I'll see you next time, friends. Adios and goodbye. PBS friends, ha, 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 konnichiwa, konnichiwa also means hello or half a day from Japan, konnichiwa, welcome to some Samoru time, guahu si sinora babi, and do I have something very, very special for you today. you love to dance that's right yeah I have a very very awesome lesson for you and I'm so sure you're gonna want to dance just like Sonata Bobby all right my friends not list to Hamzu let's get ready for our lesson I am so excited to share with you some of these amazing, amazing dance steps that you might already know. We do some of these dance steps here in my island. What types of dance steps do you do wherever you are from? Wow! Wow, Malik, Malik, what awesome, awesome dance moves you have. All right, my friends. Before we go into these dance steps, we definitely need to make sure that we learn a few of the words that we're gonna need to use when we're doing some of these steps, all right? One of the first words that I always love to use was because I love to dance, because I love to dance, is baila. That's right, baila. <laughs> all right, can you say that word, baila? Oh, <laughs> and we slowed it down a little bit, right? Doesn't it sound much cooler when we slow it down? But the word is baila, and I love to baila here at home or at school or even out, maybe even in the playground. Do you like to baila in the playground? <laughs> All right, here's another word that we definitely are going to use. And this word here is super important because Steps are very important to the dances we're learning. But the word step or pasu is one of the words that we would definitely use because I'm going to teach you a couple of steps or dance moves. Are you excited for that? Yeah. All right. High five. That's right. I love our high fives too. Do you? All right. So the word is pasu. Can you say pasu? Oh, Malik, 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 you said it really good over there. I love it. I love it so, so much. All right. Now, here are the different puzzles that I'm going to teach you. And one of my favorite, I love this puzzle all the time, is called the sit kalu. That's right. Or the circle. And we're going to make sit kalus from our head to the rest of our body, all the way down to my Feet. That's right. <laughs> All right. High five if you love to do sit kalus or circle. Can you just say sit kalu? <laughs> sit kalu. All right. That was awesome, man. And that was a long word. 
sit kalu, that's right. And one of the other steps I'm definitely going to teach you is called the apunta. Can you say apunta? <laughs> Maulik, and when you're doing the apunta, you're actually using your feet to step and point using your right foot and your left foot. <laughs> that's right. Are you ready to try some of these steps or pasu out? Awesome! Me too! I'm ready to show you a little bit of what I can do. And I want to see you do those same steps that I'm going to teach you. Can you do those steps? Maulik, Maulik! Ko listu Hamza? Are you ready? Half a day, my friends! Are we ready to baila? Yeah! I'm ready to baila! All right, let's dance, dance, dance. Here's step number one. Starting with our apunta. Apunta to step and point. Right foot and left foot. Are you ready? Let's count. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Uno, dos, tres, and quattro. Wow, isn't that amazing? Awesome job, my PBS friends. Great job. All right. Here is the next step and one of my favorites. Paso number two. And we're going to use our hips to do this step. My favorite of all. All right, don't forget to bend your knees and chin up and smile. Hatsa. Hugwa, Tulu, Fat Fat. I'm counting in Ashgiano now. Hatsa, Hugwa, Tulu, Fat Fat. Wow! Hatsa, Hugwa, Tulu, Fat Fat. And concentrate on those circles and smile. Awesome! You guys did a great job. Adjust, my PBS friends. All right, my friends, let's review these words and I hope you enjoyed some of the pasu I was teaching you today. Our first word, of course, was baila. That's right, baila. <laughs> awesome. And of course, we use the word pasu, pasu for step, pasu. And here is one of the dance steps that I love so much. It's called sit kalu. That's right. You're doing a great job, by the way, back there. Awesome. And the last word I taught you and the last dance pasu was called apunta. Apunta. That's right. To step and point with our toes. All right, my friends, my PBS friends. Have a great day and please try these steps outside or wherever you go. And that's enough for today. Adios. And I'll see you next time on Tomorrow Time. Adios. Fast, fun, fast. Fast, fun, fast. With Mr. Ernest Pachoco. Half a day, everyone. This is Mr. Ernest Ochoco with another fast fun fact. And today's diversity word is tak. T A C K. Tak. That is Swedish for thank you. Thank you. And this is sign language for thank you. Well, the reason why I am speaking in Swedish is because of the big gigantic corporation called IKEA. IKEA conducted an experiment that wasn't like super scientific, but it had a great impact on students. It was an anti-bullying experiment and they used plants. So what they did was they had two plants, both equal in nutrition and light and water, and they were bombarded with different types of words, positive words and negative words. So one plant was bullied and the other plant was praised by students. Now, what happened after all these students were bullying or praising the plants, they reacted differently. So the plant that was bullied a lot 
withered and wilted. The plant that was praised a lot flourished. So the experiment was very successful. It showed students, showed people that bullying can be a very, very bad thing and that using words of praise and positive energy is a very good thing. So when you wake up in the morning, what do you say to yourself? Ugh, I don't want to get up. Ugh, I don't want to go to school. I hate school. I'm so tired. I'm angry. I'm upset. All of these things sometimes go through our mind or sometimes we say it out loud and those are negative thoughts. So try this instead. Try saying, like what I do in the morning, I say, oh, I woke up. Wow, I'm still alive and I'm still here. Thank you. And then when I walk into the bathroom, I look at myself in the mirror and instead of saying, oh, you're so fat, you're so ugly, or you're so old, or you're so short, or whatever it is, I high five myself like this. Boop. <laughs> and I say, good job. You have done some good things in the world, in your life, and even just yesterday. And I just say something good to myself and I high five myself in the mirror. It actually really helps because when you are in a state of grace or gratitude, it's impossible for you to have any kind of negative energy or negative thoughts go into you. So be grateful. Say thank you. Find the things that are good about yourself and acknowledge them. And keep doing that because that positive energy, just like that plant, will help you grow. That's your fast fun fact with me, Mr. Ernest Ochoco. Bye, everyone. Stay positive, and you will accomplish anything. Half a day students, I'm Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio. For more than a year now, you all have continued to wash your hands and watch your distance from others. And you've done a really great job wearing your masks. We know your parents and guardians have helped you to make these changes to keep yourself and your community safe. As Governor Leon Guerrero said, we are happy you are here. We want you to continue to learn and sharpen your skills with the help of PBS University. This program is the result of a collaborative effort. We couldn't do it alone. I'd like to thank the teachers and support staff of the Guam Department of Education and PBS Guam for their work and their commitment to our students. I'd also like to thank you students for participating at home. To your parents, I'd like to thank you for taking an active role in your child's education. We are all eager to return to a time when all of us can share and study together in person. Until then, we hope you learned something new from this PBS University instruction.